سخرها عليهم سبع ليال وثمانية أيام حسوما فترى القوم فيها سرعا كأنهم أعجاز نخل خاوية فهل ترى لهم من باقيا وجاء فعصوا رسول ربهم فأخذهم أخذة رابية إنا لما طغى الماء إنا لما لنجعلها لكم تذكرة وتعيها أذن وهي 
فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ وحملت الأرض والجبال فدكتا دكتا واحدا صدق الله مولانا العلي الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على حبيبه المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Today inshallah we'll be reciting from Surah An-Naml uh, and as we know this surah is these three surahs of An-Naml, Al-Shu'ara and Al-Qasas they were all revealed in, the, in that order um, in the same span this is according to the view of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and many others um, there are many interesting things to talk about, but we'll focus just on one point, uh, which is about uh, in the encounter of Saba and Sulaiman. And right before that encounter happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, introduces another situation which the surah is actually named after. So Allah describes about Sulaiman how he had, uh, how he taught him. How he was able to speak to the birds, how he would uh, how he would have armies of jinn that used to be at his beck and at his command. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the, the power and dominion that he gave to Dawood and to Sulaiman, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him uh, a, a kingdom and a dominion that he had never given anyone before and he never gave to anyone afterwards. And as he's counting and, and, and checking everything, um, suddenly uh, they reach the valley of ants. Right? So they encounter this valley of ants. And some people, they said, well, does it really mean ants or does it mean people? But let's go with it being ants because that's the apparent meaning. So they reach the valley of ants. And one interesting thing, if you, if you really hone in on it, is that Allah described qalat namla because the word for Arabic for ant is a nam, but it's like ismil jins, right? So that's the category of things. So it's interesting if Allah wanted to say, well, an ant said so and so. So normally you would think that it's nam, but because of the way that the Arabic language is, it's not that clear. That is namla, is it a male ant or is it a female ant? But the apparent meaning it says namla, that there was a female ant that said qalat namla. Uh, an ant said, ya yuhal nam, that oh other ants, right? That uh, Sulaiman is here, right? And udkhulu masakinahum. Enter into your places of homes, right? You enter into your houses, retreat, run away, because. Sulaiman Wajunuduhu and his army are approaching, right? Lest that they will trample on top of all of you. And then Sulaiman he hears that. So Sulaiman he hears that and he smiles and he laughs and he makes a dua that Allah will allow him to show gratitude. So we have that incident, and immediately after that, then Allah describes the incident in which Sulaiman sends a letter to Saba, to the queen of Sheba, inviting her to Islam. So he sends this, this invitation, Kitab and Karim, right? This beautiful uh, letter, a delegation that's sent to her, inviting Allah Ta'alu Ali, that you should be 
follow under my leadership and submit yourself to my dominion. And of course, the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Sulaiman. And what's interesting is that Saba, rather than many other leaders who would just refuse or arrogate themselves, she actually calls the leaders, right, her ministers and governmental officials, and says that, Ya ayyuhal mala, right, oh, my assembly, oh, my ministers, my leaders, aftuni, right, give me your opinions, what should I do? And as expected, they said, we have a great army, nobody can intimidate us, just refuse, and we, why don't we can just attack them and, and we have nothing to worry about. But Saba, she actually declines to do that. And instead, what's described in the Quran, which is an indication of, of the fact that she was considering what Sulaiman had said, she responds and she says, no, we should send a hadiyya. We should send a gift, right? فَنَاظِرَةٌ So let's at least figure out and see what the response is going to be. Right? So let's see what the messengers tell us what happens next. And as we know, in the end, Saba actually visits with Sulaiman and she encounters that same throne that she was accustomed, that her own throne was apparent there. And when she realizes that, then she actually accepts and embraces Islam. And she says that, I believe in the Lord of Sulaiman. The reason I mentioned these two stories, the story of the ant and the story of Saba, is because in this surah, we encounter a completely different response to the message from all of the other surahs that we talked about. In all of the other surahs that we talked about before, there were two kinds of people. There were people who rejected the message outright, like for example, Fir'aun, right? He was given tisri ayat, he was given nine signs, and he continued to reject it. And then there was another category of people who embraced and accepted the message. So here in Surah An-Naml, Allah is describing a, 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 an ant who is a leader and a queen who is a leader. And they both fall in this third category, right? And that third category are, are, are people who will find the message appealing. Because as you know, the people, these are from the Himyarin. These are from the Himyari tribes in Yemen just outside of Sana'a, and it was the most powerful kingdom. Saba, you know, had, had, had lots of wealth, lots of authority. She had a huge army. And so for many of them, they said, well, why should we be intimidated by Sulaiman? Nothing that we can't handle. But Allah describes a third category of somebody who wanted to embrace and accept the message and realized that worship of the sun, which is what they were worshipers of the sun at the time, didn't make sense. But because she was in a position of leadership and she was answerable and responsible for her people, she was reluctant to accept the message. And that's actually what was holding her back. So it's very, it's very interesting. A lot of the Mufassirin, they draw a connection between the fact that it's called Surah An-Naml, I mean, the name is just for convenience, right? But the story is there about an naml about this female ant, which is watching over, it's not its people, but watching over the other ants. So that, that alludes, some of the Mufassim, they said, well, in fact, although the Quran doesn't say it, because this is Qalat Namla, so that female ant tells that, Ya Ayyuhan Naml, O other ants, so it suggests that that ant is actually the queen of those ants. And that in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving two different stories, one about ants and one about people, but in fact, it's the same message, which is that there are some leaders who are responsible for their people, and that if they embrace and accept the message, then they have the benefit of protecting their people from the consequences of rejection of that message. So in fact, in Surah An-Naml, what we find is a, a very subtle message to the people of Quraysh that, okay, there are going to be some of, some of them 
you know, you have the Abu Jahls, right? You have the Umayyad ibn Khalaf, right? You have those leaders who are outright going to reject the message and they're never going to embrace Islam, right? They're going to be completely against it. And then there are other people who will incline towards the truth. But there's a third category of people who need a little bit of convincing because their concern is over their people and that there could be a negative consequence to them embracing that message. It's also very interesting. The last thing I'll mention about this is also very interesting, which is that her ministers, right? Um, their automatic inclination is let's go to war. Right? So it's as if the Quran is, is uh, suggesting, Allah, Allah knows best. It's as if the Quran is suggesting that men are a little bit trigger happy, you know, that, oh, well, let's just go fight without thinking. Whereas Saba, she's like, well, let's slow down. Let's send a hadiyah. Let's Let's see what comes back. Let's see what the messenger reports back to us and will. So she was in favor of a more diplomatic approach and assessing the situation before making a decision. In fact, her argument, قالت, المُلوك, right? The, the, she said the usual course of, of action, what happens, what ends up happening is that, is that kings, that's right. So what she says is that the, the kings, what they end up doing is that when they enter into, Qarya doesn't mean village, Qarya means a people. When they enter into a land and they end, uh, enter into a people, what they end up doing is they end up destroying everything. And they make the A'izah, those, um, uh, those who are established in the society, they become the, the most debased and the most uh, negatively affected. And it's as if she's saying that, well, there's going to be a lot of negative consequences. So she was thinking into the long-term consequences of those actions. So this is a good message uh, in terms of our life lesson, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, it seems, is indicating here that there is a third course of action. Instead of just accepting or rejecting, but what Saba tried to do as a good leader was to assess the situation get more information, meet with Sulaiman, make a decision, and then she took the decision once she felt satisfied and comfortable that this is gonna be, even though I already realized that this is the truth, now I know that this is gonna be good for my people, so I'm ready to accept it and to embrace it. So inshallah, there's a lot of lessons in that. Uh, also, we wanna remind everybody, um, there was some feedback that uh, you know, during the recitation of the Quran, especially, that many of us were busy in our cell phones um, or we we're talking to each other, saying salam to each other. Of course, when we enter the masjid, we're meeting our friends, meeting each other. So we want to say salam and greet each other. But as you know, when the Quran is recited, so listen very carefully to it, right? So be silent in order that you will be receiving that mercy. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we'll be able to do so. And also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will have uh, mercy on uh, the soul of one of the relatives of our community member. So this is uh, Muhammad Ali's aunt, Mahmoud Ali Ahmed, Najma Shaheen, she passed away in India. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her soul, as well as all of those from our friends and family and from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of humanity who have passed away. Allahumma aghfir lahum wa hamhum wa aafihim wa aafu anhum wa akrim nuzulahum wa wasi'a mazukhalahum wa uqsilhum bil ma'i wa thalju wa al-barad wa naqihim min al-dunubi wa al-khafaya kama yukhafu bil abiyadu min al-danas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe, keep us healthy uh, and our family and our loved ones uh, secure. Allahumma Allahumma adfa'a anna al-bala wa al-waba والمحن والزلاسل والمحن ما ظهر منها وما بطن وسيء الأسقام الله سبحانه وتعالى protect this أمة الله يحفظ أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم may Allah accept our صيام and our قيام and all of our good deeds والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله